So you're also making decisions about your career as a member of the United States Senate, I think. I'm putting this to you. So the, the old, uh, the old, it used to be the case, I think they still say it around here, that the old choice a senator has to make is to whether to be, whether to be a workhorse or, or a show horse. And in office, just over two years, you're not railing against the federal government. You're not just railing against the federal government. You have said, I want to get things done in this chamber. I want to move legislation. Is that correct? Yes, that's fair to say. But you're still I, not comfortable I, with it. Well, I, I, I would say that um, I, I reject the premise of the question that you have to choose uh, whether or not to, um, that you have to choose necessarily between uh, painting in, in, in bold strokes that show where you want to go long term and painting with smaller, more detailed strokes that show where you want to go right now. I think you can do both at the same time. I think you can walk and chew gum simultaneously. And I think this is an, uh, an attempt to do that. You compared, I quoted your speech at the Heritage Foundation at the beginning, and you talked about you comparing today's reform conservatism with the Reagan agenda. And here's what occurs to me, particularly as we think about 2016 and a Republican candidate running for president, that the Reagan agenda by the time he came into office was just sweeping. And we've been talking about domestic matters. He set in place a domestic agenda, tax cuts, rolling back legislation that launched a quarter of a century of economic growth. It's that Reagan recovery that makes the current recovery look so weak, so tepid. And I grant you your argument that if you were serious about getting things done in the United States Congress, you've got to take it bite by bite. But put all of this together, and I don't see that it's enough, so to speak, for conservatives to run on in 2016. There's not an embrace of new growth, a new opportunity for the American economy, which you as a conservative, I know your embrace of free markets, I know you believe that free markets can do far more for the poor than the federal government ever can. So what's missing here? You're saying, you're saying this is what I've, I, as one member of the United States Senate, have attempted to offer. Let's keep talking. We as conservatives need to continue to continue the conversation. Is that what you're saying? I'm trying. Yes. So first of all, this is nowhere near complete. I, right. I've never intended to suggest that uh, what I've proposed so far is a complete package of conservative reform proposals uh, that can cure all of the ailments of the federal government. It, it is a good start, and uh, we, we're still moving forward with a lot more. But just as importantly, what we're trying to do here is to, to connect uh, a, a consistent thread of conservative thought through all of these proposals and the other proposals that will follow, those, the others that have not yet been introduced, uh, to connect them together and to help do what Reagan did, which is to help the, the average voter out there understand why it is that conservative principles will be good for them, why it is that conservative principles will help the poor, and why it is that they will help the middle class. Uh, that's what Reagan did so effectively, and that's what set in motion this sequence of events that led to the, the greatest economic recovery uh, uh, that, that we've seen in recent memory. And that's what we need again today. But the common thread is conservative principles connecting up the middle class and the poor and helping them understand how this benefits them. Okay. So Mike Lee's message to conservatives is not simply, not that it's all that simple, but here are four pieces of legislation more to follow. This is how it's done. Yeah. This is how it's done. Or it can be.